Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Enterprise Connect 2019. Brought to you by Five9. Welcome back to Orlando, Florida. I'm Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman and we are live on day one of Enterprise Connect 2019. You can hear a ton of people behind us in the Expo Center as it's getting busier and busier throughout the day. We're welcoming to theCUBE for the first time John Bourne, the Senior Vice President of Global Channels and Alliances at Verant. John, thanks for joining us on theCUBE this afternoon. Thanks for having me. So I know we're in Five Nine's booth, so yep. graciously hosting us this week. Verant is a partner of Five Nine, which we'll get into in a second. But give us a little bit about who Verant is, what your main brand is, and how you're helping customers. Sure. So you know, Verant has branded itself as a customer engagement company. We do employee and customer engagement solutions. We sit on top of CCAS vendors like Five Nine, although Five Nine is probably our biggest and most strategic partner in the space. And, and we provide everything end-to-end, -end, including workforce optimization, which was our legacy, but we're now we also provide digital feedback and outbound surveys and bots and AI and all the other things everybody else is talking about here as well. But the thing that makes us different is we're completely agnostic to the infrastructure that we sit on top of, right? And we'll mix and match pieces of our portfolio with the vendors. Uh, pieces as well, right? So we have an IVR, but we don't use our IVR. With CCAS vendors, for example, we use S. You know, just a, so just an example. I want to pivot on the word legacy that you mentioned, because you have been to this event, which has been around for a very long time. Many years. Many, many years back when it was VoiceCon. So you've seen a lot of vendors that probably weren't even here five or 10 years ago. Tell us a little bit about the evolution and communication and customer experience as table stakes for a business. It's, uh, let me talk about the industry for a bit, because I'm fascinated by this. You know, as an English guy, we don't get excited very often. But let me tell you, it's a really exciting <laughs> time to be in this industry. It's, uh, I remember when we went from TDM to voice over IP, and that was the biggest thing that ever happened. If you think back to that, what's happening now, it's unreal, right? There are more vendors, more players, more solutions, more more good stories that are talking about real customer outcomes today than there ever were before. And if you have to remember, our industry is quite conservative. We're sort of laggers, quite conservative. We build bulletproof systems that work and the phone always worked and dial tone was always there, but it's a whole new world. And as you know, right? Yeah, it, it, John, you bring up some great points here. I mean, I think about you know, networking and telecommunications. We used to measure these things, you'd put it out in the decades of change. Absolutely. We go through this and then the standard rolls out and then the customer adoption. Um, but you brought up this excitement here. When I look at my career, and you scroll back a couple of decades ago, the importance of data, the importance of intelligence of the systems, we actually talked about some of those terms. It's right. different now. Very different. Explain, maybe explain yeah, a little bit why, why it's so much different. It's not just you know, billions of customers out there, right. but you know, why, why, is, why is it so exciting so today? So if you look at our industry, and even true for us, right? we really didn't even know who the customer was. We only cared about the interaction. And we were building systems that would optimize the performance of the agent, or we'd make sure there were enough agents with the right skills at the right time. But it was all about agents and interactions. But now we're seeing the, you know, the confluence of customer engagement management, which means we're more integrated with CRM systems, we care about the customer's journey, so our perspective has changed. It's much more than just the agent, but we're not forgetting the agent. So customer experience is very important, obviously, but so is the employee experience as well, it's both. So we cater to both sides of that. Right? When you're having customer conversations, I'm curious, where does that come up in terms of um, pivoting or maybe over-rotating towards improving customer experience because we've spent historically time ensuring that the agents are properly trained? Are they kind of over-rotating back because yeah. they're so closely related? It's a great question. Let's talk about how the buyers changed, right? And you'll remember this, right? In the old days, you were selling to the techies or IT. That's especially true with Five9 and many other. We're now selling to the business. We're selling business outcomes. They don't want to know about the technology underneath. They want to know what sort of experience their customers are going to have when they interact with them as a business, right? So providing their seamless journey, regardless of the channel they're using. So voice is obviously still big. Voice is not going away, what anybody may tell you. Voice conversations are getting more complex, but there's so much more self-service now, but both um, reactive and proactive, right? So it, it's fun, but tying it all together, this is, it's hard, right? It's hard. 
Yeah, so one of the things in this space is these are not you know, push button simple solutions that are rolling out. Uh, when, when, I, when I talked to Five9 getting ready for this, they said, look, it's in the cloud and could somebody do this on their own? Sure, but we white glove it. You know, we really engage there. As a key partner of yours, how do you see that? Where does that tie into what, what, what Varen's doing? So, that, so what we do with, uh, with Five9, all of our technology is deployed, co-located with Five9's environment. It's the way we get the tighter integration. It's the way when we're provisioning new tenants that everything gets done at the same time. It's much easier to do it that way. And again, I'll come back to the buyer, right? The buyer is the business and they're saying, this is the outcome I want and I just want to deal with one vendor and I want to pay per agent per month for everything, right? And that's the, that's the thing that's so different, right? So it's an OPEX budget as well and that's where the world is going, right? I think perpetual licenses will be gone, or should be gone in the next two or three years, but they're still out there, and it's still out there. One of the things I'm curious about is, you know, we've, we've been in this multi-channel world, we're now in an omni-channel world that all of us as consumers are demanding, right? We want to be able to, not just be able to talk to a contact center, an agent, on any channel that we want, but we want to have that conversation integrated Absolutely. so that there is progress from issue identification all the way to resolution. Where are businesses on that maturation of actually delivering an integrated omni-channel experience? I think that's a really good question and I think the truth of it is it's still fairly early for most businesses, right? Because one, it's hard to do, right? There, if you look around the show, there's all sorts of vendors here that, who do one point solution, one piece. Right, and you know, to make this work in a true integrated journey, you know, the, the bots and the IVRs need to be communicating with the digital channels and email and chat and the self-service channels on the web as well as the voice, right? Because ultimately it really matters to us as a consumers when we do actually end up talking to an agent. We want them to know everything we've already done and quite frankly, we didn't really want to be talking to a live person unless we absolutely have to, so repeating all that is the biggest frustration out there. Getting all that tied together, that's what Verint does with uh, Five9 together, and that's really what makes us different. And that's hard, right? It's hard. When you look at, you know, these are business buyers make, needing to you to deliver business outcomes, what are some of the key metrics that customers use? I mean, when we think of contact center, we think of of um, customer lifetime value, net promoter score, what are some of the key indicators uh, that you help them? Yeah, those are exactly it, right? It's customer experience. It's however they decide to measure customer experience. Like you said, some of them like a net promoter score, some of them have far more complex scenarios. This, all this stuff about average handle time, first time resolution, it's not important, right? It's all about what was the experience the customer had, is it seamless, and uh, are they going to be loyal? Uh, that's, but everybody measures it differently. It's not from what I've seen anyway, so. So, John, one of the things I love coming to an event like this is you get to talk to some of the users and hear from some of the users. My understanding is Varent has some of their, your customers talking and sharing their Dude. journeys. Maybe give us a little insight, some of the flavor of what customers yeah. are going to be talking about here at the show this so week. So we, uh, we have se several customers that are doing sessions here. We've got, uh, one of our customers is talking about what they're doing with speech analytics and the ability to understand the conversations that people are having. It wasn't that long ago you could go to a contact center supervisor or a manager and say, well, what conversations is your agent having? I don't know, I don't care, right? That's all changed, right? Now people really want to understand what are people talking about? The, you know, the, the sentiment analysis is incredibly important. That's where things like speech analytics comes in, right? Uh, and then we've got other people here that are talking about the uh, digital experiences, how they're marrying together the web interactions that customers have with their contact centers. A couple of years ago, that never happened either. I mean, contact centers were always very insular and were always the cost center. Uh, people are starting to realize, well, intellectually they've always understood it, but somehow they haven't capitalized on the fact that the contact center is the one place that is the face of the company for most consumers, right? Are you we seeing? Need to get serious about that. Absolutely. Are you seeing this as a horizontal uh, opportunity that lots of industries are taking advantage of, or are there some early adopters who have a really serious need to pivot yeah. quickly? It's another really good question. It's it is a very horizontal play, but I'll tell you the way the banks move, the big banks or the big insurance companies move is different from maybe some of the smaller retail players. 
And I think they're, they're, uh, even though the technology is the same, there are still some tweaks you can do. You know, what, what people have on their desktop, what agents have on their desktop, for example, varies quite a bit. So a lot of retail companies have Salesforce on a desktop or Zendesk or, or one of those types of products, which obviously we all integrate with. The bigger companies are still running, like the banks and the insurance companies and the telcos, they're running mainframes still in the background and there's all sorts of stuff on the agent's desktop. So it, it's different, it, it's different. They're all active. I, I wouldn't tell you that there are any laggard industry verticals but they're all coming at this in a different way. The banks especially need this, the insurance companies need this, right? Loyalty is so critical to them. And then retail, obviously they want to sell stuff, right? And they want you to keep coming back and buy more stuff and they're competing with people like Amazon, right? So, and Amazon does it really well. Yeah, so. it's interesting, you know, the, the, the question is sometimes if I'm smaller or a younger company that doesn't have all of the, uh, you know, legacy, right. then a lot of times I have an opportunity to be able to do yeah. things a new I way. I mean, that's the beauty about cloud, right? Now, probably for the first time ever, I can be a relatively small contact center and I can get all this functionality at a, an affordable price, right? I couldn't do that before, because it was all premise based, it was big ticket, seven figured items. It's just not possible now. It's a huge advantage for them now, huge advantage. Well, John, thank you so much for joining Stu and me on theCUBE this afternoon and sharing what Verit is doing with Five9 and also the experiences and uh, evolution that you're seeing in enterprise communication. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much for having me. Of course, Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE.